excitement just grow. Come on, let that excitement grow. Let it, let it, let it grow right now. Come on. Let it grow. This is for Jesus. This is, has nothing to do with us. It has nothing to do with me. It has nothing to do with anything but God. This is about worshiping God. This is about uh, approaching God. This is about the fact that he's pulling us with cords of love. This is about the fact that uh, we are, amen, privileged, hallelujah, to even um, be called by God and, and to be entering into that straight gate. Praise God. It says strive to find the straight gate. Strive to find it and guess what me and you we found it amen. and we're here and so we should be really excited amen that we have found that straight gate and I thank God for everything that he is doing hallelujah this morning those of you that are going to be with us online call somebody up tell them hey you know what there's a, a live bible study going on right now hallelujah amen there's a live bible study going on right now Hallelujah. At Lighthouse of the Valley, the word of the Lord, hallelujah, has come to us. Praise God. A live Bible study. Praise God. And you could be part of it. Get your notes. Get your Bibles. Amen. And let's begin to draw closer to God in worship. Amen. We're going to be teaching today again as we left off yesterday. Offering yourself in true worship. Offering yourself in in true worship so amen and you can find our notes on on our facebook page the word of the lord facebook page you'll find our notes right there for today you'll find some images and everything too from yesterday that are we're going to be using about the tabernacle of moses amen we're going to be talking about the brazen altar today but there's many of other images in there also that you could see so you could get a picture of it. Amen. Also, at, at uh, YouTube, if you go with the Word of the Lord with Pastor Ball not on YouTube, we have some uh, produced um, videos there of these Bible studies. Brother Kogo, praise God, that God brought Brother Kogo here. And he's, he is really making a, doing a great job producing those videos and putting them on YouTube. Amen. And but, but best of all, God gets all the worship because Amen. it's all about putting the more sure word of prophecy out there. Hallelujah. Praise God. Which is, what did we say the, word, the more sure word of prophecy is? It's right here, the Bible. Amen. The more sure word of prophecy. Why would you even mess with anything else if this is more sure than anything else? Amen. Praise yes. God. So we have that. <clears throat> Praise God. And, and the word of the Lord comes to us and it touches and it impacts uh, our lives. And hallelujah. And I know it's going to be impacting those that are joining with us today. Amen. On our live video, but also on our YouTube pages. And those of you that are here today. Amen. Remember, we're responsible for one another. We're accountable for one another. Look around this room and, and why some people are not here today. Hey, pray for them. Talk to them when you get a chance. Encourage one another. Why? Because this is about meeting at the temple and at the houses. What? Daily. Hallelujah. Amen. Being involved. Being apostolic. Being biblical. Praise God. Hallelujah. And planting the kingdom of God in our hearts. That's what it is, man. It's planting the kingdom of God in our hearts. Hallelujah. As, as David said, your word have I hid. And that's that word that talks about, I found some so, I found a treasure. I found some, I got to put it in the right place. I'm going to put it in my heart. I'm going to hide it in my heart that I could live righteously, that I could live godly, that I would not sin against you. Hallelujah. That my life would change. Amen. Woo! Praise God. And so, he is worthy of all the praise and all the worship. And so today, like I said, we're talking about offering ourselves, offering yourself in true worship. So I want you to just kind of envision that. You know, you're, 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 <laughs> you're right there. You're seeing the, the, the tent that's, that, that's, uh, uh, that's uh, been put there. And, and the, the, the tabernacle of Moses, and it's got only one door. It's got only one entrance. Hallelujah. It's got only one gate. Amen. Praise God. And you're called to offer yourself in true worship. Amen. 
And uh, it is a call to worship. It is a call to seek God's face. It is a call to enter, to proceed, to offer yourself in true worship and spirit and the truth. It is a call to a deeper relationship with God. We talked about that yesterday, how it's in Hebrews 8 and also 9 types and shadows of what? The true way. Types and shadows, amen, that show us, amen, that which was going to come when Jesus got here and and John 14 verse 6 Jesus said unto he said he said I am the way the truth and the life no man cometh unto the father but by me praise God so we follow the Lord we talked yesterday also about how as we pick up our cross and follow him that was in Romans 8 36 talks about how we live for God how God is helping us to be able to proceed and enter into that straight gate and to offer ourselves, amen, a true sacrifice, amen, hallelujah, in worship, amen. So today we're going to we're gonna start with this thought of why we're choosing the tabernacle of Moses. Why we're choosing the tabernacle of Moses and not uh, one of the other tabernacles or one of the other um, that, that was built, amen, the temples actually, because this is really the only tabernacle amen and that was what we thought about yesterday it's a tabernacle that first of all it was in a desert it was in a desert it was mobile <laughs> the other ones weren't <laughs> this thing will follow you around actually you followed it hello no. so I'm just telling you what the Lord is showing me I I chose it but it, it like I told Brother Kogo, it's where the wind is listing. That's what he's told. It's just wherever God is telling us to do, that's what we're going to do. So he's the one that chose it for us to study on. And so, amen, hallelujah. One of the things that we think about, about the tabernacle of Moses and, and your notes, and you can write it down if you don't have them. Again, you could visit our Facebook page, The Word of the Lord, and the notes will be on there. First, of, first thing is that, hallelujah, it was initiated by God. This, is, this was God's idea. This wasn't David's idea. This wasn't Solomon's idea. This wasn't Zachariah's idea. This wasn't any other person's idea, hallelujah, but God's idea. Amen. This one was. It was his design. It came from him. So he initiated, it was initiated by God, and it was a place, amen, hallelujah, where his presence would dwell in the midst of his people. In the middle of them, it would be right there. It was a place where he would dwell, where he would live. Amen. Hallelujah. Right there where they could uh, spend time with him if they wanted to. Because, see, that's, that's where the worship part comes. It's up to you. Hallelujah. We've got to really get deep into that word worship because that's what this is about. But one of the things, too, is why we chose, amen, the tabernacle of Moses is that it is God's pattern. It is God's idea. You look at God's pattern and you look at God's idea versus our ideas. All right? Versus our ideas. When you think about the tabernacle, how it was so humble, and we think about some of the things that sometimes we do, Right? All the pomp and circumstance. Amen? All the things that we begin to want to add. Hallelujah. We're talking about Zachariah's temple, right? Uh, I don't have the scripture with me, but it just began to come to me this, as we were talking. Amen? How when they were building their temple, it was more of a humble temple. It wasn't this tabernacle, but it was a temple. And many of the people that remembered Solomon's temple began to cry. And began to almost feel like a shame. Oh, this is not as nice. This is not what we like. This is not, you know what I mean? So, versus what we would do and all the pomp and circumstance, amen, where really, when, you're, when you really think about it, hallelujah, where who is the one that's actually getting the glory? We begin to get the glory. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Come on. I feel the Holy Ghost. There wasn't even any music in there. I mean, the first one. 
When you come to worship, it's not about getting pumped up and getting some cheerleader to sing to you. It's about worshiping. That's right. Yes. Hallelujah. Just me and God. Mm-hmm. That was the first initiated by God. Hallelujah. Amen. And the thing about that tabernacle, it was where the sacrifices and the offerings and the worship, hallelujah, and His presence were the only things there. Okay? Sacrifices, offerings of yourself, sacrifices in obedience. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. Obedience is greater than yes. sacrifice. Yes. This is not about following your own little thing and saying, God, here's what, look what I got for you. Like Cain, and Cain never asked you for, God never asked you for that. Right. And then you get all mad because things don't work out for you and you don't want to kill Abel. Because Abel, not my man, I know Abel right here, but, but, <laughs> Abel, but Abel was doing things like God wanted to. Hallelujah. Worship is about doing it God's way. I said worship is about submitting to God's will. Amen. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost, man. I feel the Holy I feel God's presence in this place. Hallelujah. Amen. So the only thing that was there were the sacrifices and the offerings and the worship Hallelujah. And his presence were the only thing in that tabernacle. And the instructions on how to go deeper and deeper and deeper into God's presence. Amen? Amen. Praise God. And so, one of the other things about this, about this tabernacle also, and you, you find it in your notes, it was God's temporary solution. It was God's temporary solution Hallelujah. It was a shadow of the ultimate solution, which is wow. Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. <coughs> also, in your notes, I want you to really think about this. Amen. A call to a deeper relationship with God is what was right there in the middle of them. Right there always. It was there calling them. The Holy of Holies right there in the middle of them with a certain way to get there. Calling them to a deeper walk, hallelujah, with God. To a deeper relationship to, with God. To a deeper offering of yourself. We talked about that yesterday. That as you begin to worship God, you begin to offer yourself more to God, you're gonna, certain things are going to be unlocked in your life. Yes. The only reason why they have not unfolded in your life is because you have not kept moving forward. You're just staying there. Mm -hmm. And as you walk closer to God and you offer yourself and go into deeper with God, things will begin to unlock in your life. Hallelujah. Praise God. Again, a call to a deeper relationship with God, a deeper offering of yourself. Amen. We noticed that in this tabernacle, and if you look at, at it, in the, the, we have the images there online, you can see it. Amen. That there was a gate. And the Bible talks about that. We're going to look at that. And it's in John chapter 10. Because again, this is a shadow of the things that are real. Mm -hmm. John chapter 10. Hallelujah. When we look at it this way, we begin to see it even more powerful what this really is all talking about. Amen? John chapter 10, verse 7 through 10. It says, Amen, and remember, this is John chapter 10, if you read the whole thing, it's talking about, you see, see verse 1. Ver, John chapter 10, verse 1, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door and into, into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, is a thief and a robber. There's only one door. Amen. There's only one way to this thing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Anybody that says anything different, they're liars. Mm -hmm. That's right. They're trying to steal things from God. They can't, but they're trying. 
Amen? Amen. Praise God. We're going to look at verse 7. Then said Jesus unto them again. It is something that he repeated. He spent some time on this thing called the gate, the door. John chapter 7, chapter 10, verse 7. Verily, verily, again, talking about something very serious, very important. Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. I am the door, amen, of that, what? You're a sheep, right? Why? Because you're going to sacrifice yourself. You're going to offer yourself, amen, hallelujah, in true worship. <laughs> you're not a goat. The goat don't want to go in there. It's a sheep. Amen? Praise God. And he said, all that ever came before, all that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. Hallelujah. He says, I am the door by me, by me. If any man enter in, what? He shall be saved. He shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. What does that mean? This is a lifestyle. I said this is a lifestyle. Worship is a lifestyle. True worship in spirit and in truth is a lifestyle. Because... It's about going in and coming out and finding pasture. It's about being a healthy sheep. <laughs> it's about being guided by the Spirit. Hallelujah. The thief cometh not but for to steal. Talking about anything that's other than this. But to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that, thy might, that they might have life and that they might have it in more abundance. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. So we see that Jesus is talking about that gate. Amen. That door. That entrance. Matthew chapter 7. Amen. Matthew chapter 7, starting with verse 13. Hallelujah. Amen. You have a say amen. 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 It says like this, enter ye in the straight gate. He's talking, who is he talking to? You. He's talking to you. He's talking to the sheep. <laughs> right? Make sure you find that one, the right gate. The straight gate. Not the one the thief is trying to sell you. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Enter ye at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat. They go into the wide gate because it's easy to find, easy to go. Amen. There is no real sacrifices. There's no real offerings. Amen. There's not really... It's not taking you to the right place. Amen. Hallelujah. And then, watch, watch what it says. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to read it all of the 15. Because straight is a gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth into life. It's going to take you all the way to the Holy of Holies. Amen. Praise God. It's going to start at the brazen altar. That's where it's going to start. But if you just keep worshiping God, you're going to end up at the Holy of Holiest. Amen. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth into life. And few be that find it. Beware. So he says, be careful. Beware of false prophets. People that tell you anything different. Any, that is trying to sell you a gate that's not narrow, that's not the gate. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. It says, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Amen. Amen. People that don't really care about you, all you are is a number. Right. All they're going to really do is eat you up. Mm. Come on, man. That's it. God has given us the right people in this church. Those of you that are listening, if you're living in Stockton tonight, we have Bible study at Lighthouse of the Valley, 7 o'clock. You're invited. 
a man uh, on Sutter Street in Stockton, Lighthouse of Valley. You can find us online. Amen. Praise God. So, see in your notes. I'm going to go to Psalms chapter 8. <clears throat> Amen. And, and what we're talking about here, you see it on your notes, the specialness of human worship. The specialness of human worship. There's something special about, amen, God's human creation, amen, that one day worship. There's something special. Amen. Psalms chapter 8. We're going to read the, the whole chapter, I believe. It says like this. The Lord our God, O Lord our God, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, Amen. who has set thy glory above the heavens, out of the mouth of babes and sucklings. Amen. Has the ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest steal the enemy and the avenger. In other words, people... Amen. That trust in God. People that are humble. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. And when I consider, when I consider the heavens, when I look at everything that's around me, the works of thy fingers and the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, I ask myself this question in verse four. This this makes me ask this question when I look at all creation. Hallelujah. Praise God. What is man that thou art mindful of him? What is man that you're always thinking about him and drawing him? What is man that you are trying to get him, hallelujah, to enter into that narrow gate? Hallelujah. That you're bringing him, hallelujah. That you're drawing him. What is man that you sent your only son, hallelujah, amen, to die for him on a cross? What is man, hallelujah, praise God. What is man that thou art mindful of? that you're thinking about him, that your mind, hallelujah, is set upon him, hallelujah, and the son of man that thou visit him. What is man that you visit him, that you don't quit on him, that you keep trying to draw him, hallelujah, with the cords of love, hallelujah. What is man, hallelujah, amen. It says, verse 5 kind of gives you a little bit of what that is. For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, hallelujah. They're not angels, they're different creation than angels, hallelujah, praise God, amen. Man, and has crowned them with glory and honor that thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands thou hast put all things under his feet all sheep and all saying yea the beasts of the field the fowl of the air and the fish of the sea and whatsoever passes through the paths of the sea oh Lord oh Lord how excellent is thy name in all the earth some about us there's something about us There's something about us that He's calling you, amen, all the way to the Holy of Holies. Yes. There's something about the thought and that whole idea in the first place for you to be there. <laughs> amen. Hallelujah. Praise amen. Praise God. There's something about man. Genesis 1. Hallelujah. And verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish and the seas. He was talking almost the same thing. Over the fowl and the air. Over the cattle. Over all the earth. And over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created him. Male and female created them. Yes. Hallelujah. We are created in God's image. Amen. Which means that we have our own decision making. We can decide to worship God or not worship God. Hallelujah. We have that power. Amen. Hallelujah. There's something special about, hallelujah, human worship. There's something special, amen, when you begin to submit yourself to God and to offer yourself. Hallelujah. Amen. To offer yourself. Praise God to the Lord when you begin to offer yourself in true worship to God. Hallelujah. There's something special. Amen. So let we go further into our notes. The number, the number one, there's seven different types of 
furnishings in the tabernacle. And we're going to start with the number one, amen, and that is the altar of burnt offering, also known, amen, as the brazen altar. Amen? Well, we're going to start with that, and that we'll find the first thing on that in Exodus chapter 27. The first step as we begin to offer ourselves, amen, and true worship. You said 27? Exodus 27, verse 1. Hallelujah. The first step that when you enter into that straight gate, the first thing you will see is a brazen altar. And, and, uh, and like you said online in our notes, you'll find the image of it there. It's an altar. It has horns on each corner. Praise God. Hallelujah. Exodus 27 verse 1 says, And thou shalt make an altar of shit and wood, <clears throat> five cubits long and five cubits broad. The altar shall be four square, and the height thereof shall be three cubits. And thou shalt make the horns of it upon the four corners thereof. Hallelujah. Upon the four corners thereof, his horns shall be of the same. And thou shalt overlay it with brass. Everybody say brass. 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 Amen. Brass. Um, brass, amen, hallelujah, symbolizes, amen, hallelujah. If you look at that, as soon as you walk into that gate, it's what's called the outer court. Amen, that's where it's at, the outer court. And it symbolizes, like, your first steps into God where you come as you are. It symbolizes, amen, how you come to God in all your worldliness and and everything that you have on you. Amen? So, with, it, with brass, and thou, thou shalt make his pans to receive his ashes. Everybody say ashes. Ashes. Amen. And his shovels, and his shovels, and his ba basins, and his flesh hooks. Praise God. So, so they don't escape. Amen? Mm -hmm. And his fire pans, all the vessels thereof, thou shalt make of brass. And thou shalt make it for a grate of network of brass, and upon the net shalt thou make four brazen rings, and the four corners are of the rings are there so that you could pick it up and take it with you wherever you go. You take that altar wherever you go. You take the whole, every piece of furniture, everything was movable. It was a mo mobile tabernacle. Wherever you go, that thing went with you. Amen. Praise God. <clears throat> Verse 5, And thou, thou shalt put it under the compass of the altar beneath that the net may be even in the midst of the altar and thou shalt make stays for the altar stays of shit and wood <clears throat> and overlay them with brass and the staves shall be put into the rings and the staves shall be upon two sides of the altar to bear it so you could carry it amen so again amen praise God so you could move it around hallelujah in your notes we talked about the altar of burnt offering Amen. It's a place where you have to be willing. You enter into that straight gate, and the first thing you see is the, the brazen altar. Amen. Hallelujah. The altar of burnt offerings. Amen. And, and you have to be first, you have to be willing to be able to worship in spirit and in truth. You have to be willing. Amen. You have to be willing to what? To kill, to die. That word altar means one of the key parts of that word altar is the word slay. Yes. Amen? You have to be willing to die. You have to be uh, willing to put everything in your life that doesn't want to go any further. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anything that doesn't want to go further. Mm -hmm. Anything that can't go further. <laughs> because, hey... Here's the thing, I mean, talking about holiness, there's certain things that can't go further. And the only way you're going to get rid of them is to put them on the altar. Yes. You, you better take hold of this altar in your life. Yes. Because there's things that hold you back because you don't put them on the altar. Yes. And so you better tie them up on that horn. Mm -hmm. Tie them up so they don't escape. Make them stay there for a while. Yes. That horn also 
represents power. There's power in that altar to begin to slay your flesh. There is power in the altar. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. To begin to mortify the works of your flesh. Works, the, the, the lust of the eyes and the lust of the flesh and the pride of life. There is power at that altar. Amen. Hallelujah. So that when you're done, you can move on to the next furnishings. Jesus. Hallelujah. You have to understand these things are there so that you can worship God in spirit and in truth. Amen. When he talks about sacrifices, he didn't want, he wasn't talking about necessarily this because they didn't want to do it. They weren't doing it willingly. They were just going through the motions. He's talking about obedience is greater than the sacrifice you're doing just by going through the motions. Why don't you do it? Because you want to do it. Then we got something. Then something really starts happening. <laughs> that old flesh, man, the pornography needs, uh, the um, being here and there, the relationships out of wedding, whatever. The lusts, the cheating, the lying, the stealing, the hate, the anger, the... the uh, the alcohol, the sickness. Alcohol, bring it on, brother. The drugs, come on. Help me out, somebody. <laughs> Everything. Right. The backstabbing, the hate, the unforgiveness. The rebellion. The rebellion. The it's as a sin of witchcraft. Mm -hmm. That means you're rebelling against God. Yes. Mm -hmm. The Jezebel spirit doesn't want to submit to authority. That's right. Mm -hmm. you're, you're, you don't want to be to the authority of God and to the people that God put around you. That's right. Yeah. Amen. There's power in that altar. Amen. Hallelujah. Anything that can't go any further. Anything that's trying to stop you from entering ultimately into the Holy of Holies. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We got to spend some time at this place offering up yourself yourself worshiping God in spirit little s which means you yes. Hallelujah. and in truth which means with God's instructions and obedience, obedience. Yes, his will. Hallelujah. that's all it is man don't have to complicate it mm. that's, simple. We complicate <laughs> that's right <laughs> truth with the big T yeah. amen, amen. amen. <laughs> Right. The more sure word of prophecy right here, man. Why don't you just get this yeah. and start doing what it tells you Amen. with your own spirit, That's with your right. own willingness. Amen. Amen. The answers are in the book. That's right. It's, all, it's answers in the book. Thank you, brother. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Things that don't want to proceed any further, they must die right there. Amen. Where it talks about the ashes. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That that's a place where you begin to, uh, amen, hallelujah, exchange things, hallelujah, to God right there. Right? I mean, on the first step. Hallelujah. You leave your ashes there. God is willing to change. He's willing to exchange something with you. Come on, give me your ashes and I'll give you this. <laughs> Come on, give me your ashes. Come on, let me see you really kill it right there. Don't leave nothing. Don't let it squirming. Hallelujah. Bring it down to ashes and I'll give you some for it. Praise God. Hallelujah. It must die. That's right. Let's go to Isaiah 61. Isaiah being a big uh, thing around lately as far as uh, in, in where the wind is listing. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 61. The winds of the Spirit are blowing, hallelujah, upon His church. <clears throat> upon those that are born of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Isaiah 61. We're going to read verse 3 and then we're going to read verse 1 through 3. And you guys say amen. 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 It amen. says, amen. amen. It says, amen. Hallelujah. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. Hallelujah. And God came with a purpose. Amen. To those that care, to those that cry for righteousness. 
in Zion. That's a place where people gather seeking God. Real believers. Hallelujah. Amen. And to give unto them, what? I want to give you something. <laughs> I want to give you the beauty of holiness for your ashes. Hallelujah. I'm ready to exchange something. Hallelujah to you. I'm ready to do something for you right now. Hallelujah. Give me your ashes and I will give you beauty. I'm talking about some that people will notice in your life, a change in your life that will attract, hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. He says, amen, beauty for ashes, the oil of joy, hallelujah. Joy of the Lord is what? My strength. How in the world are you making it without the joy of the Lord? How are you making it? Hallelujah. I don't know how you're going to do it, but you better be ready to exchange some ashes. Hallelujah. For that joy. You better be ready. Hallelujah. To exchange some ashes. Hallelujah. Leave some things on the altar and say, God, not my will, but your will be done from here forward, God. Hallelujah. That's right. Amen. Gloria a Dios. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. And so he's saying, Amen. The, the, the oil of joy for the morning and the garments of praise. Hallelujah. See how much God really wants to do for you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you Father. He has a whole wardrobe he wants to give you, Mario. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. The garments, hallelujah, of praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. yeah. Hallelujah. The garments of praise. Amen. Hallelujah. For the Hallelujah. spirit of heaviness. Amen. You don't have to stay in that heaviness. Mm -hmm. That's right. Why don't you just exchange some? Amen. We're going to talk about that later. We talked about buying. He says, come. Isaiah said the same thing. Come and buy from me. Hallelujah. Without money. Hallelujah. You give me some though. I'm going to take some. You're going to have to buy it. Give me some ashes. I'll give you. Give me some ashes. Hallelujah. Praise God. Give me some faith. That's what it comes down to. Yes. You got any faith in your wallet? Come on, you have any faith? Pull that wallet out. Like that commercial. What's in your wallet? <laughs> What's in your wallet? That's a good one. That's a, we're going to make our own commercial, all brother. We got to do that. Hey, brother. Brother Cole, help us out. You're the producer. What's in your wallet? Not Capital One. Faith. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Faith. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. Mm. Amen. Hallelujah. That they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Remember, this is all about him being glorified. Yes. Amen. Remember, that first tabernacle, what makes, it, what makes it awesome is that there was no pomp and circumstance. Can I say something? I believe God's going to come against the pomp and circumstance in the church, man. Jesus. Don't get offended with me. I just I believe, believe it. 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 It's just too many people getting the glory. Yeah. I believe it. The Bible says that I mean, he, call, he doesn't call the noble. No, he he says he doesn't call the mighty. Mm -hmm. He says right. he doesn't call the wise. Mm -hmm. But that's what we do. I'll tell Brother Kogo, I'm going to turn the camera around and have you guys teach and preach. <laughs> That's where the wind is listing. It said, in and out of season. Because this is not about bringing a big name preacher all the time. I, I, I believe that God's getting tired of our conferences. Mm. Of all the things that we do. There's too much pomp and circumstance. Too many people getting praise. Mm. Yeah. All praise and glory to Him. Jesus. That's the truth. Him alone. That's the truth. I got to move on. Let's go ahead and move on. Verse 1, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He that sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and to opening of the prison to them that are bound to proclaim the acceptable year. Right now is the time. Amen. Yeah. Of the Lord. And you notice when you read that chapter in the New Testament where Jesus gets up and reads it, he doesn't read this last part. Remember that. that you'll find that in Luke 4 19 through 20. You can write it down. 
Mm. Where Jesus reads this, he doesn't, he doesn't, he leaves the last part because it ain't time for that. It's time to worship God. It's time to draw near to God. It's time to to try to find the straight gate and enter all the way to the holy. It's an acceptable year. It's time. Amen. It's not here yet. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. So we're going to go back to our notes. Amen. Hallelujah. God is willing to exchange with you if you're willing. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 8. We've been doing that a lot that, uh, there too lately as the wind listed. Romans tells us what do we have to do in this world to survive. Not to survive, but to be more than conquerors. <laughs> Saying about surviving, man. That survival thing, that's for the survivalists. We're not survivalists. We're more than conquerors. Amen. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Praise, praise the Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. Romans chapter 8, verse 13. It says, For if we live after the flesh, yes. Romans chapter 8, verse 13, For if we live after the flesh, you shall die. Amen. You're going to die. Amen. That's what he told Adam and Eve, right? Yes. What's going to happen, Adam and Eve? If you go do what you're not supposed to do, you're going to die. Hallelujah. Praise God. But if you, through the Spirit, say through the Spirit. Through the Spirit. Through the Spirit. If you do what? What do you, what do, you do? Mortify. You know what that word mortify means? It means kill. Oh, no, no. If you mortify. If you through the Spirit. In other words, again, remember chapter 8? Chapter 8 is doing what for you? It's telling you how you're going to make it on this earth. Being more than conquerors. It tells you, amen, that His Spirit prays with your spirit. Amen. Helping your infirmities. Yes. Hallelujah. It's telling you all that. And then right here it says, He's even going to help you kill yourself. Don't take that the wrong way. You're just, erase that if you have to. The bad parts in your life. Yes. The lust of the flesh. The lust of the eyes. And the pride of life. Yes. The Holy Ghost is going to help you. Amen. Praise God. Mortify what? The deeds of the body. This fallen nature is in your flesh. The fallen nature is in your body. That's why you can't go around following your, your, your heart and your feelings and all that. Yes. you got to follow the Spirit. Amen. The Spirit will come. Yeah, if you follow your flesh, you're going to be in a pit. Yes, you are. And only God can get you out of there. Thank God He will. Amen. If you cry out to Him. Oh, Jesus. Woo! Praise God. Mortify the deeds of the body, of the body and you shall live. For as many are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Amen. Amen. They are the sons of God. Amen. We're going to stop there because that's all about us worshiping God in spirit and in truth and mortifying the works of the flesh. Amen. Praise God. The woman of Samaria. We're going to go there. John chapter 4. Remember, we're on the first step. There's seven uh, furnishings, amen, in the tabernacle. We're on the first one, the brazen altar, where you worship God in spirit and in truth. John chapter 4. Amen. The woman, I put, I put, put this down there. The woman of Samaria is called to worship. The woman, the woman of Samaria is called to worship in spirit and in truth. She is called. She wasn't even a Jew. Amen. John chapter 4. When therefore the Lord knew, verse 1, how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not, but his disciples. He left Judea and departed 
again into Galilee. In other words, Jesus had something else important to do too. It's not about just doing the, going through the motions. Amen. He has something to do. Verse 4, And he, he must needs go through Samaria. He needed to do. This is something that Jesus needed to do. He was going to introduce this woman of Samaria into true worship in spirit and in truth. Then cometh he to the city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. So they were near to this place that was in Samaria. It happened to be a place that was ven venerated as some really important place. Amen. Verse 6. Now Jacob, well, was there. Again, that's what made it important in, in many people's eyes. Was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey. Jesus was tired because of all the walking, amen, that they do back then, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. Here that's important because it tells us that it was not the regular hour where most of the women go and get the water. This woman would go there when she would, knew she'd be by herself because she was ashamed of her lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yet God is calling her amen. true, true worship. He called me. <laughs> God is calling her. He's so interested in her. Amen. Calling her to worship God in spirit and in truth. Amen. He's spending his time teaching her. That's right. Wow. Just her. Hey. Amen. That is awesome. Amen. Amen. That is really awesome. This goes to how much time God will take just for you. That's right. Whew. Amen. And so, praise God. And verse 7, There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said unto her, Amen. Right here, verse 7, is the first thing that Jesus is already trying to get her involved into worshiping. Verse 7. Amen. Give me to drink. Amen. Start waiting on God. Start waiting. Don't wait till, don't wait till He waits on you. Say, God, I... Wait on him. Give me something to drink. Just like, hey amen, when Elisha went and saw that poor lady that was about to die, her and her son, <laughs> she's over there trying to pick up sticks and stuff to make herself her last little bread before they died. What well, Elisha, hey, hey, can you make me some bread too? <laughs> and bring me something to drink. Right? God gives us that opportunity to worship. Amen. In the worst of times, amen, hallelujah. That is what God's calling you. God is calling you right now, if you're listening, amen, to just enter into true worship, worshiping God in spirit. And he'll use whatever, hey, just give me a drink of water. That's all, I, that's all I need from you right now. Just start with that. Make the effort, For his disciples were gone away into the city to buy meat. Then said the woman to, uh, of, of Samaria unto him, how is it that thou being a Jew ask, ask his drink of me, which is a woman of Samaria, for the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. In other words, why are you breaking the protocol? Mm -hmm. This is odd. Mm -hmm. That you, being a man, not only a man, but a Jewish man, mm -hmm. are talking to me, a Samaritan woman, hallelujah, at all. Hallelujah. God is calling people to true worship. He is drawing people from all types of lifestyles. Hallelujah. He is breaking barriers that nobody else breaks. See, the church needs to be in the business of breaking barriers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. And he's calling her to break barriers. Yes. Hey, give me some ashes. Yep. Give me a little bit of ashes. Come on, I got some of you. Just give me a little bit of ashes. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. Give me to drink. 
Amen. And she said, Amen. Well, we don't normally deal together. Why are you talking to me? Verse 10. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God and who it is that said to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked me. Again, begin to worship. Ask me, and he would have given thee living water. Right? One thing about Jesus is that he kind of cuts to the chase. He likes to just get to, Hey, this is what you, I got what you really want, man. Don't, I'm not going to waste your time. He's ready to do something in your life right now, man. He's, he's not. He's ready to move now. Amen. I love that about Jesus. That's right. He's not in a hurry, but I mean, at the same time, he's getting to business. He told Nehemiah, he said, Nehemiah, I know you're here to ask me a bunch of questions. Man, let me just cut to the chase, man. You got to be born, hallelujah, of the Spirit. You got to be able to see the kingdom. You got to be born hallelujah. of water and of Spirit so that you could enter into it. Yes. Amen. Amen. And so that's what Jesus is doing with her too. Hey, let me just cut to the chase. You need what I got. Amen. I got the goods. Hallelujah. Praise God. Verse 11. The woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with it. The well is deep from whence then has thou that living water art thou greater. Verse 12. Again, right here, Jesus is war. He works on us. Jesus works on all our messed up beliefs and ideas. And we got a lot of them still, man. You got to realize we got a lot of growing to do still. Amen. Jesus, help my unbelief. Amen. All of us have different areas in our lives where he's going to start breaking it up, man, if you let him. He's trying, to, he's trying to get this woman, amen, to enter into true worship and spirit and the truth. But he has to break up some barriers. A lot of false ideas, things that we grew up thinking were right the whole time and are not really. We have all that. That's right. That's right. Amen. Praise God. Art thou greater than our father Jacob? In other words, I got my own religion, man. I got my beliefs. Give me some ashes. <laughs> Give me some ashes. I don't care. Hey, it's, it's about being biblical. It's not about being Catholic, Baptist, Amen. Lutheran. The truth. I, I, I can, can I even say, I hope no one's going to get mad at me, being apostolic, That's Pentecostal. Right. It's true, because some of those things that we know as being Pentecostal are a little off. Yep. Some of those things that we know about being apostolic are a little off. We're closer. But it's about being biblical. Amen. True. You got a little bit of ashes out there somewhere, anybody? Got a couple. Ah, thank you. Amen. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost, man. He is drawing us to the Holy of Holiest. Yes. Yes. And Jesus has his fan in his hand. He knows how to clean his church up. He knows how to separate. Amen. The uh, what's it called? Yeah, he knows how to separate the wheat from the tares, yes. from the chaff. Yes. Yes. He knows what he's doing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. He's like a surgeon. Right. I said, he's a surgeon. Amen. Oh, Amen. Hallelujah. Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the will and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? What's that? What's going on here? She's basically worshiping Jacob. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep, worshiping man. <laughs> basically. <Yeah. laughs> Amen. And verse 14, but whosoever drinketh of this water, Jesus, 13, Jesus answered and said unto her, whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. Mm -hmm. Amen, hallelujah. Telling him, you know what? It don't matter if Jacob dug that water. <laughs> you, you need the water I got for you. Oh, come on. Hallelujah. Amen, 14, but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give, him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well. This is what God gives us, a well. You're going to have your own well yes. inside of you. Hallelujah. 
inside of you that begins to gush out. Hallelujah. Begins to just gush out. Hallelujah. Praise God. I will give you your own well of water springing up into what? Everlasting life. Let me do this for you, man. Let me do this for you. Don't stick to your barriers and don't stick to your religion. Don't stick to all your beliefs. Hallelujah. You must worship God in spirit and in truth. Praise Him. Hallelujah. The woman said so. It's like she, it's like she hasn't really stopped fighting it. And she's still fighting it a little bit, right? She's, she hasn't, the ashes are not all there yet. <laughs> yeah. Amen. The woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I, might, that I might thirst not, neither come hither to draw. And Jesus said unto her, Amen, hallelujah. Since you're at the brazen altar, why don't you bring your husband? Since you're at the first step, hallelujah, yeah. since you entered into the gate, hallelujah, and you got that, you got that uh, uh, sacrifice tied up around the horns, mm -hmm. hey, let me finish what I got to do here, hallelujah, why don't you bring your husband? Mm -hmm. Let me get into your business a little bit, mm -hmm. can I? Mm -hmm. Or you want to leave? <laughs> right. Do you want to leave or do you want to leave some ashes? What do you, which one do you want to do? Mm -hmm. Bring me your husband. I want to get into your business. I got to get into your heart. I got to do what only I can do. But you got to let me. You got to spend some time at the brazen altar. Yes. You got to realize that when you see Jesus in the book of Revelation, his feet were what? Brass. Yes. Mm -hmm. What does that tell you? That he walked on this earth, man. He knows what he's talking about. He's been here and done that. The one that was and is and is to come. The Almighty. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Bring your husband. This is when he starts digging deep into her and finding out what's some of the changes that needs to happen in her life. Hello? Amen. Hallelujah. And the woman answered and said, I have no husband. And Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. Don't you like that Jesus knows everything about you? I like that. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I love it, man. Hey, God, matter of fact, there's some things you don't, that I don't even know they're in there, man. Can you please tell me and bring them out so I can get rid of them? Amen. Yes. I mean, he knows everything about you. Why don't you just trust him? Right? You're listening right now. You just get closer to that brazen altar and just let God do what he wants to do. Let him bring out all those skeletons in your closet. Let him clean out your closet, praise God. Let him clean out your closet so that you could turn that closet into a prayer closet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. So that you could enter, hallelujah, into the Holy of Holies daily. Yes, so he can your Amen. Let him clean out your closet. Bring out all those skeletons. He could turn it into a prayer closet. Praise God. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Hallelujah. And he said, Go call your husband. Hallelujah. And the woman answered and said, I have no husband. And Jesus said, Hallelujah. Thou hast well said, I have no husband. Amen. We're going to read a little bit forward and we're going to stop there because our hour is about up. But it's awesome when we get into God's Word. But I just want you to leave you a little bit with that taste. So you make sure you're with us tomorrow at 11 o'clock. Amen. Right here we're live on Facebook at a Word of the Lord Facebook page. You'll see the notes there. Also, these will eventually be on YouTube also. Amen. Make sure you're with us tomorrow. Invite somebody. We're going to go ahead and read the text a little bit further. But then we're going to stop there, okay? Amen. And then verse um, 18. For thou hast had five husbands, and, uh, and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband, in that says thou truly. Amen. You're, you're entering into worshiping in spirit and in truth. You got to be truthful with God. Lay your whole life out there. There's a reason why she had five husbands. 
There's a reason why you're in sin. Mm -hmm. There's a reason why you're in the miry pit. There's a reason why things have happened, but God is the one calling you out. He said, I must go to Samaria. Samaria is a stronghold. God is not God is not scared of any stronghold. That's right. Amen. Glory to God. Hey, the Lord is calling us to storm the gates of hell. He that's where he's worked. That's where the wind is listing. Yeah. Are you there? He's not scared of strongholds. That's where he goes. Are we following him to Samaria? Are we helping people get out of the Amen. There was a reason why she had five husbands. There's a reason why you're going what you're going through right now. But let God get you out of it. Amen. Let's pray before we, we dismiss. Father, we thank you today for your word. And Lord, there's no doubt at all. There's no doubt at all, my, my God and my Savior. Hallelujah. There's no doubt at all, God, that this is your word. That we have a more sure word of prophecy, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. We thank you for your word, Lord. And Lord, we pray that you bless, Lord God, the people that are here today and those that are watching and online. And that God, hallelujah, that just like in the tabernacle of Moses, that you would be the one that gets all the worship. But we humble ourselves before you, God. We humble ourselves. We need you. We need you. We seek your face. I pray for those people that are watching right now, Lord, that you saturate their homes, Lord. That you saturate their homes right now, God. That your kingdom, Lord God, will come right into that house right now. That your kingdom, Lord, will reach right into their homes right now. That your kingdom will reach right into their hearts and into their families and everything that's going on with their families, Lord God. All the barriers that have to come down. All the strongholds, Lord God. Hallelujah. They will begin to come down, Lord God. Lord, we ask it in Jesus' name, God, because you're the one that opened these doors for us to be able to reach into their homes right now. So I pray right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, that the rain fall upon those homes. Let it saturate, Lord, your spirit right now. Begin to saturate and touch their heart. Let them feel that call, that call to true worship and offering of themselves. Let them feel that call to enter into that straight gate. Hallelujah. And to eventually enter into the holy of holiest, Lord. Lord, we ask it right now in Jesus' name for your glory and your honor, God. Oh, we praise you. Come on, let's just thank them right there where you are. Why don't you just worship him? Lift them up. He is worthy. He is worthy of all our praise. Hallelujah. Come on. Right there where you are. Don't stop. Don't stop. I feel, I feel the presence of God in this place.